we're out here on this job today uh, because the customer said they get muddy water discolored water every time it rains so typically discolored water every time it rains is due to surface water leaching into the well um, during heavy rainfall it saturates the ground and then it goes down and you know enters the borehole and it brings in the color of the dirt and all that I was here and I replaced this pump or I fixed the wire in maybe one of my past videos uh, about two years ago and I had cameraed the well look at this I had wrote on it this is why I make notes large void at 90 foot so that's probably what's bringing in our uh, our muddy water but we're gonna go ahead and camera it and uh, we're gonna see see what it shows so what I'm doing now, I'm basically just draining the system. When I turned on this hot and cold faucet, discolored water came out originally. Not very, not very strong pressure on either one of these. Maybe, uh, maybe a filter that's plugged up under the house. Probably needs one change. I can't remember if it has one on it or not. <clears throat> Tight squeeze. I didn't see the bladder tank under here anywhere. I'll have to find it later. I just want to double check to make sure that the bladder tank's okay. Because sometimes a bad bladder tank will actually start to rust on the inside of the tank. And that will give you your discolored water. Okay. Now we've been here for 10 minutes. And I was trying to run the system, let it cut off. And that way I could disconnect the wire nuts. Since no one's here, I can't get inside to flip the breaker off and I was running some water at the house and it was kind of weak pressure and then I came over here and I grabbed this 90. Typically when you're dealing with well water, you're dealing with 55 degrees. This elbow here is warm and this well pump is not kicking off. It's just running and running and running. So we have got the pump running nonstop down the well, making the water get hot and we don't know why. So this is a little sketchy. Um, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna go ahead and unwire it while it's hot. Not, not the safest situation. Um, I wanna see if we've either got a stuck switch or we've got a dry well, which I doubt it's a dry well. I said that it made 20 gallons a minute. So something, something's going on here. All right, I've got it disconnected. It was originally coming out with a lot of trash in it, a lot of sediment, you can't really see it now, but if I wipe off the well seal, that was what it came out. But it did, it came out warm, so something screwy is going on down the hole. The pump pulls fine amps, it's actually pulling low amps, so it's like the pump might be on its way out. Don't know. Just, it was just sitting down there running and running and running ever since we got here. Let's see if it's heavy. No? Not heavy. I can pick it up. Okay. We're going to go ahead and pull the pump out. I know it's something. Yeah, uh, it. When I stick my hand, I stick my hand down in here, it's actually warm. It have shit growing in there. It was warmer when I first popped the seal off. All the heat is coming up. That pump's been down there running. I, I wonder if when we take that pump out if it's going to be blue from heat. Got a good static water level. Yeah, you can see the discoloration. Alright, help! Something's going on. I can hear it. Wow, that is hot. She is warm, guys. She is warm. That's one of our pumps. What's the code date on it? 20? Okay. It's not that old. I, mean, I came out here and I guess I replaced the pump. In 2020? Okay, after a very quick inspection, 
I've already found one bad wire. So the wire has to be replaced regardless. Um, we got red on that one that's dead. I'm sure I'll probably find another one. I think when I came out here last time, I just replaced the pump. So the wire is still original to this system. Look, another bad spot right here. Bad spot. Kind of crazy. Okay, cut all the wire off. Cut it all off. That pump, there may be an issue with the pump, I'm not sure. If it is, it's still under warranty, and I can give them a new pump. But we know for sure that the wire is bad. There's another bad spot in the ground wire right there. The system needs some love. Now, our game plan is uh, we're going to try to stick the original pump back in it, but we're going to test it once we install the liner. <clears throat> I've got to make up a fitting with a pressure gauge and a valve just to see. Um, I was thinking of this. We found the wire, so they're working on stripping the wire off now. Mike's got a new roll of wire there, so we're going to put that on. I was thinking maybe they have the filter installed before the pressure switch, and if that's the case... The filter is clogged up so much that it can't feed the pressure to the other side of it and it's deadheading the pump. That's what's making it get hot. And if that's the case, we're getting like 140 or 160 PSI on this side and there's only like 30 PSI on the other side of the filter. If that's what's going on. I don't know because I cannot access inside the house. And I believe, I know the filter is in the closet, um, but I don't know where the bladder tank is. So I don't really know how they have it plumbed. But my pump I installed back in 21, because it's a 2020 model, it shouldn't be bad. So I'm going to put it back in, and we're going to test it like this. Since it's only in there like 180, 200 foot, it ain't too bad to pull out. So we're going to go ahead, since the well's discolored, cameraing the well's not going to do me any good. I'm not going to be able to see anything, but because I camered the well last time and I left a note that says there's a large void at 90 foot, I'm going to go ahead, put the packer and the liner in the well. We're going to sleeve the well to 100 feet. We're going to stick five sticks of the four inch pipe with the packer on it and we're going to slam it down to 100 feet and then we're going to put the pump in it and then we're going to test it and that'll tell me if the pump's good or not. Um, when we installed the pump back in the well and we put it all in, I'm going to run water to get the well to run clean, right? Yeah. So I'm going to hook up a valve and a pressure gauge in front of it. And I'm going to close the valve and see if it builds up to like 140 PSI. Because if it does, then we'll know the pump's good. Right. If I close the valve and it only builds up like 65 PSI, pump's bad. Right. Here's the rubber packer boot that we're going to slide in the well. These are the rubber wipers that are basically going to separate the dirty water up above from the clean water down below. And you have to push this down um, below the area that you know is leaching in the surface water. Only the first foot is a little difficult once all those wipers get curved up it'll go down pretty easy <sighs> mosquitoes out here are terrible yeah. <sighs> might be off. time to push the bar on it now yeah. it's a coupling right down below it too it might hang yeah it's, that's probably what it's doing it's hanging the lip of that coupling a foot below it I'm going to put one of the orange elevators on it and then I'll let y'all put the uh the wipes is on it. Yeah. A little grade difference. Just think, 90 more feet to go. <laughs> Once it gets wet and a little damp, it slides a lot easier. 
but when we get we get to 63 feet that's when it comes out of the bottom of the casing and that's when it's going to get hard all right go ahead and take justin's off and then take mike's off and then uh span it across the coupling and push it down to the clamp now that there's more vertical weight yeah definitely don't want the oakley's going down the well Better that than the car keys going to the bottom. Man. Grandpa did that years ago. I Had them in his shirt old. pocket and he leaned over the well to look at it and oh. bloop, there they went. I got some That's good, Mike. Perfect. Three more to go. That's the third pipe. Whoo, I can smell the glue. Yeah, don't put your face in front of this pipe when you push it down. Knock you up. Not all the way to the bottom, an inch right. off. Nice and easy now because it's about to drop out the casing. Yeah, you put the brakes on, Mike. There you go. You ain't got to push. One of y'all just need to have the brakes. There you go. Yeah, it's always that first initial bore hole right at the bottom of the casing that's a little bit bigger, and then the bit the bit stops wandering around, and then the hole gets tighter. Woo! She, yeah, she fell pretty good. All right, let it go, y'all. Let it go see that that like loose spot that's oftentimes can be a like a, a spot where the uh, surface water is coming in mm -hmm. it's not a smooth borehole so it's it's a void it like. just might as well push this is bending his way it's gonna get tighter yep. it's, good, it's not gonna fall far you've only got four feet to go y'all yeah. gotta push it at the same the time might go there you go both y'all need to be on top of one another perfect okay here's the final piece we've got to worry when we get down about nine nine more feet because that's when we're going to reach that void that i had witnessed on the camera <sighs> hopefully i don't know i don't know if it'll drop or if we'll feel it or what but we're just letting it glue up i'm gonna go ahead and start pushing on it here in a second you push it i'm gonna hold back Ooh, there it went. That was heavy than I could hold it on. Mm -hmm. Alright, go ahead and just slowly let it go down. Mike's probably holding it. Are you ready? I don't know. There you go. You ain't gotta hold it. Well, I guess a little bit. I guess a little bit. Hey, hold on one second. Hold on, stop. Everybody stop. I gotta put a clamp on it. Looks like we're below the void. Yeah, I think so. It's perfect. I like to see it that it gets tight. That that means that the boot, the packer, yeah, the packer sealed. I was ready. Are you ready? Yeah. It might be loose right here. That's perfect. Yeah, a little bit further. Perfect. That's what I like to see. The liner is completely installed to 100 feet. We've got the old well pump hooked back up to the pipe, and we're installing the wire now. Next thing we're going to do is install the pump, and then we're going to wire it to the hot wires that we've already got. Then i got to test it. This is how I'm going to test it. I know it's kind of crude, but it's all I've got access to. I've got all of these fittings threaded in kind of loose to where they all kind of leak, to where the system just doesn't max out. So basically, if it reaches 100 PSI, it'll tell me that the pump's good. Um, real crude way of doing it. I wouldn't recommend it, but it's kind of what I've got. So I'm going to hook it up, and uh, I'm going to flow the well for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, till it runs clear. And then I'm going to thread on this piece turn it on for maybe five seconds three seconds and then we'll see how much pressure it builds up to
it'll take off as soon as it gets to the 100 foot mark it'll go real fast it'll fall out of the uh, the liner you're getting close to it there it goes <laughs> told you got the pump sitting on the well seal now all I gotta do is wire it up okay now I wired it up hot had no way of going inside and cutting the breaker off and it looks like we've got pretty good flow that's typical flow for a three-quarter notice the discoloration in the water that's what we're after that's what we're trying to clear up now because we pushed the liner in I expected to get pretty nasty here in the next 15 minutes but that water I'm touching is still warm Justin feel the water it's warm it's getting yeah just feel it it's not cold no it's not cold that pump was sitting down there running and running and running I'm thinking there's a uh, a filter plumb before the tank and the filter is completely plugged up and it's not allowing the pressure switch to kick off I'll be able to test that theory here in huh yeah, it's that's normal um i'll be able to test that theory with the pressure gauge i'll just unthread it hit it real quick and it'll tell me whether or not it's bad because if it don't build 100 psi then the pump's bad the pumps wore out from sediment we also don't want the well to run out of water because we pushed the seal down in the well below the 90 foot mark we don't want the 90 foot zone to be feeding this well all of its water. If we start running the well out of water, then we'll know we cut off its main water supply. Then we'll have to come out here with a crane, grab that chain right there and pull this system out of the ground. That's why we have to test it. So a funny little story while we uh, let the system run. If we look down here at this, at this plant, this is called Hellebora, and I noticed it when I was sitting here. Um, I guess they planted it here. When I was here three years ago, they actually gave me um, one of these one of these plants, and I planted it out in my front flower bed. And it's one of the one plants that has actually came back year after year. They're actually really pretty flowers. There's some crazy stories behind these plants. I forget what he was telling me, something about people used to use it back in medieval times to ward off evil spirits and whatnot. I don't know if this is, it may be a different type, but I do know that that's what that is. It's been about 15 minutes, and basically all the stuff that we pushed down in the well has reached the pump, so that's why we've got this specific color of water now. If we look, if you can tell in my hand, see the black specks? That's some of the granite dust. We're going to let the uh, system run open-ended for another 30 minutes or until it runs clear. We'll, uh, we're going to run and get some lunch. And uh, If it was going to run out of water, it would have ran out of water by now. I think I've let it run for about 20-25 minutes. So we're going to take a ride up the road, go get something to eat, come back, and see what it looks like. Ooh, that was one good lunch. Now let's go ahead and go out here and see what the quality of the water is it's been flowing for about 35 minutes luckily it's still flowing it's a lot better a lot better the quality of that water is considerably better I would almost say it doesn't have any turbidity in it Let's see if I can catch anything I got a little bit, a little bit of black right there. Not bad though. That's just sediment from the rock borehole. All right. <clears throat> now what we're going to do here in a minute, we're going to test to see if this thing will build pressure. I wanted to stick my ear down here and listen. know if y'all can hear that you can hear water pouring in the well you can hear it pouring in the well
kind of crazy. Okay, so now what we're going to do, got the wire disconnected. We're going to go ahead and take this off. And we're going to thread on that pressure gauge just to make sure that pump can build adequate pressure. Which I believe it does. I believe it will. Let me see it. We don't want to tighten it. I want it to actually leak a little. Oh yeah, there we go. Perfect. Good. You're good. Yep. Great. It built up to 100. That's all I wanted to see. Pump's good. The filter in the house is clogged. That is why you do not plumb a filter before the pressure tank. <clears throat> okay. Now I got to hook up this to that and hook the house back up. I've got the uh, plumbing all plumbed up temporarily. I know it kind of looks crazy, but that's just the angle of the pipe that I've got to deal with coming out of the well. This is all just going to sit here temporarily while they test the system to make sure it works. Luckily, we've got a really big, heavy rainfall about to hit us in the next 48 hours. That's really going to tell the tale um, whether this liner worked or not. Um, so I've just got to let the customer use it. I have to call the customer right now and ask them... Um, should I leave the system off? I can turn the main breaker off to the house. Or do they want me to energize it? Or can somebody come here and let me in the house to where I can change the filter? But I'm going to go ahead now. And we're going to wire this bad boy back up again. It's always a little sketchy working with hot wires. Definitely don't recommend it. Hey, well look, at least the pressure is a lot better than it was before. Great. Well, luckily the well pump turned itself off, so that means the pressure switch clicked and the pump's not sitting here deadheading. So, we're good to go for now. So we're going to head back to the shop and I'm going to call the customer and let her know what's going on. And I'll try to come out here one day when they're here to where I can go inside, check the bladder tank, make sure the air pressure is good, and then uh, just take a look at the, the stuff inside because the pressure tank and the filter's both inside, and I have no access to it, so. Hey, you can't get rid of me that quick. So I called the homeowner, talked to her, explained to her what was going on. She said that the bladder tank was not inside the house, it was under the house. So I decided to crawl under the house and look for the pressure tank, and I found it. It's in the far corner away from the door. Guess what? It's bad. So it's not self-cleaning. It's storing all of that sediment in there, and every time the pump kicks on, mixing it all up and it sends it to the house and it makes the pump short cycle so it runs more frequently that is what prematurely kills the wire and it also makes the pump cycle on and off on and off on and off and it hits the rock wall of the well creating sediment stirs stirs it up so it just now it all makes sense so i'm gonna go ahead rip it out put a new one in i'll have it done in probably like 40 minutes and when they get home, the only thing they'll have to do is change the water filter. And then pretty much everything's good to go. Um, I have to turn the main breaker off because I have no access to the well pump breaker. So I'm going to flip the main outside. This is a pretty good indication as to why the well pump wasn't kicking off. The, uh, the nipple, the stem below the switch is probably slap, slam full of sediment. Alright, let's go ahead and turn off the main breaker. Don't want to get electrocuted. I hate it when nobody's here because I have no access to the stuff we really need. All right, so here's the pressure tank. Hear how it sounds like a thud? That mic went ahead and opened up a, a spigot. Tried to drain what little residual pressure there was. That was the first thing I noticed when I came here was there was like absolutely no water pressure. Here, look at the color of the stuff that was coming out of it. It just all started coming out. Rusting inside the tank. Okay, so we went ahead and drilled a hole here above the bladder and a hole here below the bladder. And if the tank was good, the tank would be lightweight and it wouldn't have any water in it. Now listen. Hear the water sloshing around in there? It's trapped. So we know 100% that the tank is bad and go ahead take the pipe off and then tip it over and then water should come out of that hole okay so i got the tank basically tipped over on its side 
and see. Watch as we do this. Water will pour out. Water is never supposed to be on the upper side of this seam. The upper section is always supposed to be pressurized air. And then this is going to have a balloon in the bottom. And the balloon stores the water. Once that balloon tears, the trash and the water and everything makes contact with the upper side of the inside of the tank. And it causes that rusty color. And that rusty color is also what the customer will be complaining about. Eventually, if you leave it long enough, it'll kill the pump or it'll kill the wire, just like it did on this job. But what it'll also do, the water sometimes starts to get stagnant and it'll start stinking. But right now, the tank weighs so much, we've got to drain out some of this water to where we can move it. In record time, we've got the brand new tank installed. Stainless steel fitting on that side, brass pecs fitting on that side, brand new 4060 switch, good to go. That's what your tank's supposed to sound like. It's supposed to ring like a bell. When they're bad, they sound like a thud. And that's what the other one was like. Okay, time to get out of here. Go turn the main breaker back on and get this system up and running. I'll take a quick peek back under here and make sure I don't have any leaks. And uh, luckily, I think the homeowner or the, the homeowner's mother-in-law showed up while we were gone. I can hear her upstairs now. Okay, main breaker back on. Now, I should have the best pressure that I've ever had throughout this entire video now. Now it's got a good, correct, look at the water. That, that the other glider tank was nasty. As soon as all that discolored water comes out, it should start running clear again. Because now we don't have a bad bladder tank mixing in dirty water. Just like that, it's running clear. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Good to go. Look, this hose, it's finally got good pressure. Look at that. That is gross. And it'll get clear, just like that. That's the difference between a good tank and a bad tank. Cool. I was able to get in the house and change the water filter out. It wasn't terrible. It had a little bit of granite shavings on it, but other than that, it wasn't terrible. But, okay. Y'all ready to go? We're all done. So we made it back here to our office and we like to take stuff and scrap it. So this is the old tank tee that was out of the tank. That right there is exactly why that system was not cutting off. See how stopped up that, that nipple is? There was no water getting through there. That's why that pump was running and running and running. That is absolutely crazy. Let's see here. Yep. That's plugged yeah. up. Look how stopped up that is. Yeah, Mike. that's what I thought it was. Uh, yeah. No, that's what I told you earlier. It might be stopped up. That is crazy. It was barely getting water occasionally. No, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna take it out and see what the uh, see what the other end looks like. Yeah, look at this. So this is the end that went in the bladder tank. Look. Oh yeah, that's a good old. Yeah, that's that good stuff. It was settled in there. A good bladder tank don't have that problem. They're self-cleaning. Let's go ahead and take this nipple out and see what the other side looks like. Oh yeah, that ain't too bad, but that nipple is completely clogged up. So this is what I always tell people to jam a screwdriver through. This one, you would just replace it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely throwaway. Well, that makes for another great day. Thank y'all for watching. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Help me reach 100,000. And make sure, if you haven't already, hit that thumbs up button. Today was a quite a different day. I went to do one job, and then it kind of cascaded into another and into another and into another so i'm a
probably, I don't know, $1,000 over my estimate, but at least the system's up and running correctly, and it, it's dangerous when a well pump doesn't kick off. It's not so bad if it doesn't kick on, but when it doesn't kick off, you're talking about a pump that's capable of building 140 PSI, and imagine if that little tiny hose on the back of your toilet that's, that fills your toilet with water, imagine if that hose sees 140 PSI. It could explode and then it could flood your house. So that is the danger of having a system where the switch doesn't kick off. That's also where those pressure relief valves come into place or come into play. You would have that pressure relief valve reach 75 PSI and guess what it would do? It would just be leaking underneath the house, just pshhh, and no one would know. So situations like this, when you find something screwy like that, you really got to diagnose it. I knew from the very moment that I showed up there that something was wrong. I called the homeowner, didn't have access to the power, didn't see the, didn't see the tank, I had to go search for that towards the end of the job. Once I tested the pump and knew the pump was fine, then I knew it was either the switch or the tank. So, that's it. Thank you all for watching. See you all on the next one. Peace.